Welcome back to Introduction to Finance. Today, we're gonna to be going through the differences between an annuity and an annuity due, specifically looking at applications for the future value equation. So we're gonna be looking at a set of three cash flows where it's $100 per year for a total of three years. And the rate that we're gonna be using is 5% APR compounded annually. So first we're gonna solve this equation as if it is just a regular annuity. So the timeline I've written out here, we have my three cash flows. Each one occurs at the end of each period. So we get our first cash flow or invest our first cash flow at the end of the first year. And so if I calculate the future value of this annuity, the future value equation takes me to the period of the last cash flow. So if I were to write out first my future value of an annuity equation, future value of an annuity equals my cash flow times one plus my I or my rate. Our exponents could be the number of cash flows minus one divided by I. So in this problem, our repeating cash flow is $100, our I in this case, everything's annually. So our I is gonna be the annual rate, 0 0.05. And then our N is the number of annual cash flows here. So that'd be three. So when I plug this in, I end up with an answer of $315.25. Now again, just to emphasize that timing, this is telling me the future value annuity at t equals three. Now if I switch my annuity to instead of each cash flow happening at the end of each period, it becomes an annuity due, where each cash flow occurs at the beginning of the period, this is what my new timeline would look like. So I still have three cash flows, just now each one is at the beginning of each period. So if again, I group these three together as an annuity and I calculate the future value of this annuity, it's going to take me to the time period of the last cash flow. So my equation would be the future value of the annuity at t equals 2 equals, it's actually going to be the exact same thing we wrote up here because we have three cash flows, our rate is 5% and the cash flow is $100. But now there's a second step that I have to do because I don't want to know the future value in t equals two. I want to know the future value in t equals three. So if we look at this as now a shortened timeline going just from two to three, I have $315 and 25 cents at t equals two. And I want to bring that forward to t equals three. So this is a single cash flow being compounded one period to do that, instead of using my annuity equation, I'm going to use my single cash flow equation. So future value equals present value times one plus I to the N. Here I would have my present value of $315.25 compounded at 5% one time. That gives me an answer of 331 and about one cent. So this is my future value at t equals three. Now that would be my answer. So what I can do rather than breaking it down into two steps is I can actually generalize this annuity due equation by saying that the future value of an annuity due equals the future value of a regular annuity compounded one additional time, so times one plus i. So first up, I calculate my regular annuity with three cash flows. Then because it's telling me at one time period too early, I'm gonna bring it forward one more period, compounding at one time. So that becomes my equation for the future value of an annuity due. 
Now let's think about the interpretation of these two numbers that we just calculated. So suppose you are saving for retirement with one contribution each year. So you're just saving one lump sum each year. Would the effects of compounding be larger or smaller if you invested at the beginning of each year instead of the end? So let's look at a little hypothetical timeline here, right? Suppose again, we just had those $100 cash flows. Now to look at the effect of compounding, I'm gonna write out each one of these cash flows individually. So my first timeline, I'm compounding this first $100 two times to get to my future value. Then my next cash flow, compounding it once, my last cash flow is already in year $3, so I don't compound it at all. So I'd have 100 times 1 plus 0.05 squared, 100, 1 plus 0.05, and then 100. That would be the same number that we calculated above. Now, if I look at my lower timeline, what's actually happening here when we have the due version is this first cash flow is being compounded one, two, three times. Then the next cash flow is being compounded two times. Then the last cash flow is compounded one time. So now each one of these cash flows was compounded one additional time. So what that results in is this future value is going to be larger for this annuity due. So the effects of compounding for this one would be larger if we invested at the beginning of each period because each time we're earning that one additional compound. So this was the derivation and the explanation behind the intuition for the future value of an annuity due. I also have a video for the present value of an annuity due, which I'll link here at the end of this video.